Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade eight, unit five, lesson number three, practice problems. Here's an equation that represents a function. 72x plus 12y equals 60. Select all the different equations that describe the same function. Ooh. So, how are we going to be able to tell if these are equivalent to that? Well, this first one looks to me like if you multiply everything of the original by 10, 10 times 60 is 600, 10 times 12y is 120y, 10 times 72x is 720x, that works. Now, what else will work? B is y equals 5 minus 6x. That's not set up the same, so we can't really get through that nearly as well. So what is this one going to look like? How could we check this? Well, if we divide this by 12, 12y 12 divided by 12 is y, 60 divided by 12 is 5, 72 divided by 12 is 6. Ooh, that works because this 6x was on the other side. B is going to work. Divide each side by 12. C, we've gone to 12x. 60 divided by 6 is 10. 12y divided by 6 is 2y. 72x divided by 6 is, yeah, 12x. That's going to work. Now, what's next? y equals 5 plus 6x. Well, we have y equals 5 minus 6x, but if we took this equation and just to kind of show how we got b, if I wanted y equals, I need this x value off the left side. So I would subtract it. Do it to one side, you got to do it to the other. Those cancel. 12y equals 60 minus 72x, which is y for b when we divided everything by 12. We get a negative 6 here, but here if we're adding 6, we're actually subtracting the x value here. So D does not work. E. What about E? 4 E. X. Well, if I were to multiply everything here by 6, these fractions would cancel. So 6 times x is 6x six equals 5 over 6 would be just 5. y over 6 would be just y. 6x equals 5 minus y. Well, if I look at this one, which we already showed works, The subtracting 6x, if I add 6x to each side, I'd wind up with 6x plus y equals 5. This 5 over here stays the same. E is going to work. 7x plus 2y equals 6. 
Well, to get 2y, there are originally 12y's. 12y divided by 6 is 2. 60 divided by 6 is 10, not 6. So that's not going to work. How about g? x equals 5, 6 plus y over 6. Oh. Those two are just like these two. We have to subtract there. If we try and add there, it doesn't work. So A, B, C, and E work. And I'm back, but you didn't really notice I left. Phone is ringing off the hook today. What are you doing? There we go. Okay, graph a system of linear equations with no solutions. Let's give everyone motion sickness because stuff feels like jumping around today. A system of equations with no solutions. No solution means we're going to need two parallel lines. Woo! One line. Do a better job. I really need better practice at drawing straight lines. There, they're parallel. Write an equation for each line you graph. I purposefully gave each of those a slope of one, up one over one. One has a y-intercept of one, the other one has a y-intercept of four. y equals x plus four, y equals x plus one. You don't need the same slope as me. You don't need the same intercepts as me. You just need two lines that are parallel, meaning same slope, different y-intercept. Okay, brown rice costs $2 a pound, and beans cost $1.60 per pound. Lynn has $10 to spend on these items to make a large meal of beans and rice for the potluck dinner. Let B be the pounds of beans and R be the pounds of rice. Write an equation relating the two variables. So what do we want? B and R? $2 times rice, the number of pounds of rice, plus 1.6 times the number of pounds of beans equals $10. $2 per pound of rice, $1.60 per pound of beans. We have $10 to spend. Rearrange the equation so that B is the independent variable. So if we want B to be the independent variable, we want R to depend on B. So we want this to look like R equals something. So if we have 2R plus 1.6 b equals 10. If we want the r by itself, we got to get rid of the b. So I'm going to subtract 1.6b from each side. Those will cancel and 2r equals 10 minus 1.6b. Now to really get the r by itself, we have to divide each side by 2. 
So R equals five minus point eight B. R equals five minus point eight B. Now rearrange it so R is the independent variable, so we're gonna want B equals something. So if we want that to be B equals something, we have to get rid of the R. I have the other one on one side. I'll do this one on this side. So 2R plus 1.6B equals 10. If we want the B by itself, we have to get rid of the 2R. 1.6b equals 10 minus 2r. Now to get the b by itself we have to divide each side by 1.6 and b equals 10 divided by 1.6 is 6.25 2 divided by 1.6 is 1.25. So B equals 6.25 minus 1.25R. Solve each equation and check your answer. This first one's kind of a long one. Okay, let's start out by, I think we should probably distribute here. So we're not touching the 2x. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times negative 2x is negative 8x equals, now let's look at the other side. 3 divided by 6 is a half. So I'm going to call this 1 half times 2x plus 2 plus 4. Combine some like terms over here. 2x subtract 8x is negative 6x. So 12 minus 6x equals, distribute here, half times 2x is x, half times 2 is 1. Combine like terms over here. 12 minus 6x equals x plus 5. Um, get all the x's on one side. Negative 6 is less than 1, so let's add 6x to each side. That gets rid of the negative x's. 12 equals x plus 6x is 7x plus 5. Subtract 5 from each side. And 7 equals 7x. Seven Divide each side by 7. And 1 equals x. Now plug it in to check. 2 times if x is 1, 1. 3 minus 2 times 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, so that's 2 plus 4, which is 6. On this side, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 6 is 2 plus 4 is 6, that works. This next one looks a little easier. Starting out with the tricky one. More z's on the left, so let's add 3z to each side. Those will cancel. 4 plus 3 is 7z plus 5 equals negative 8. Subtract 5. 7z equals negative 13. Divide each side by 7. Z equals negative 13 sevenths. Uh, 
Ooh, fractions, fractions, fractions galore. Okay, everything over here is being divided by four. So why don't we start out by multiplying by four? If I multiply that by four, those will cancel, which means I have to multiply this side by four. Four times a half is two. Four times an eighth is one half Q equals those canceled Q minus one. Now more Q's on this side, so I'm gonna add half a Q, add half a Q, those will cancel, two equals Q plus half a Q is three halves, or one and a half Q minus one, add one to that side, add one to that side, three equals three over two Q. I'll just rewrite it over here so we have some space. Now, what's stopping the Q from being by itself? The three over two. Divide each side by three over two. Those will cancel. Q equals, what's three divided by three over two? What's three times the reciprocal? Three times two thirds, well, what's two thirds of three? Two. Q equals two. Excellent. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.